All right, guys. Hello. Welcome. Today, my wife is out of town for a wedding, which means even though it's nine o'clock at night, I can drink whatever much monster I want, and I can cook a rack of ribs with a pound of bacon grease, and no one can freaking stop me. Anyway, so today we're going to be doing a little bit of a political compass, except for tactical companies. You'll notice there are two, uh, I, I forget what they're called, axis, axes there's two axes we've got fed slash contract simp and boog slash ted's cap so this axis measures basically two different things one how willing are you to sell to civilians in general and it also is going to measure how reliant your company is on military contract this axis is a lot more simple this just represents quality on the far left is going to be bad quality meaning on average maybe your products have a really bad rep maybe they break more than usual maybe you have a really bad run at making products and on this side you know your your stuff's great all the time functions as advertised and it functions well so Let's go ahead and jump right into it. I am going to start with Vortex, okay? I believe Vortex represents the center of this perfectly. Let me tell you why. On the really almost perfect quality end, we have their rifle scopes, okay? If I ever own an LPVO, which I might someday, as much grief as I give LPVOs, it's probably going to be either a Strike Eagle or PST. Obviously, I would love a Razor one day as well. Okay, so their rifle scopes are incredible. Their long-range scopes, their mid-range scopes, their LPVOs, even though LPVOs are not my favorite uh, type of scope, they are, if I'm going to get one, it's going to be a Vortex one, straight up. In the mid-range, you have their Prism Optics. In my opinion, their Prism Optics line is pretty underdeveloped, although what they have done is really good. And I'm going to talk about that in my Spitfire review. But suffice it to say, their Prism Optics are good. They're one step away from being, quote, military grade. Although I think for people like you and me, hiking in the woods, I think they're perfect. I love them to death. Uh, and on the bad side of Vortex's products, we have basically the Red Dot Sights and the Huey. So... They have the same issue, their holographic sights and the red dots, where on lower power settings, it flickers, which will drive you insane. It drives me crazy. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's just because I'm a Zoomer and every Zoomer claims to have ADHD or what it is, but it drives me up a wall. Maybe it's just being a sane person. Um, so yeah, overall Vortex, I'm going to put them dead center for quality. I'm also going to put them dead center for this. Most of Vortex's advertising is going to be marketed towards military and police or hunters, okay? And by the way, fat, uh, being a FUD also will put you higher up. However, Vortex is more than willing to talk to people that are in sort of the civilian preparedness tactical space. Lucas Bakken's a great example of that. And also their Prism line of scopes and the Red Dots, they're marketed towards civilians. They're more than willing to sell the really cool stuff to civilians. Now, what might change their position here is whether or not they'll sell their military, the new contract smart scope. If they'll sell that to the civilians, they'll keep them dead center. If not, that would move them right up the graph. But anyway, I think Vortex represents a really good center. Next, we have EOTech. EOTech a few years ago probably would have been like up here maybe. In my opinion, they're more like down here at this point. Uh, for a long time, EOTech, I mean, they, they had a ton of government contracts, obviously. There are a ton of EOTechs in the back of police patrol cars, right? A ton of government agencies use them on a ton of stuff. I mean, you, you'll, you've seen EOTechs probably mounted on a, on a wide variety of things. Machine guns, um, smoke grenade launchers, you know, all, all tear gas launchers. EOTechs are mounted to all sorts of government goon stuff. Back in the day, as many of you know, they had a lot of issues. They wouldn't handle temperature well. They have a really bad battery life. They would fog up. All sorts of bad things would happen to EOTEX. However, in recent years, they've gotten a lot more comfortable selling their not only their really cool stuff to civilians, but just making stuff for civilians in general. I think the Voodoo line of LPVOs, again, as far as LPVOs go, they seem pretty cool. Um, they're also more than happy to sell all the Gucci night vision stuff to you. However, I do think EOTech, I think they could innovate more if they wanted to, but they don't. And part of why they might be motivated not to innovate as much is because, again, not only the U.S. government, but governments all over the world use EOTech optics. So, yeah, I think that's a pretty fair place to put them. Next is going to be Steiner, okay? 
And I, keep in mind a lot of this stuff, guys, this is not like meant to be science. This is just Schizo Saint's stupid opinion, okay? So don't take this too seriously. I have literally never watched or t a, a Steiner product review or talked to someone who uses a Steiner that doesn't mention a minor to something that could be a pretty severe issue, okay? Let's talk about their laser aiming modules. I think that is probably the most pr popular product in the civilian space from Steiner uh, in, the, in the United States. Um, even though they're probably the most widely used, uh, people still complain about them. It's because they have to get them warrantied a lot. It sounds like they break a lot. People don't really like them. They're really heavy, but the United States laser night vision market really, really sucks. Night vision laser market, it really sucks. If you want more details about that, I'd recommend looking up uh, Hoplophile or Brass Facts. They'll be happy to talk your ear off all day uh, through YouTube and <laughs> telling you how it sucks. So yeah, their laser aiming modules suck. Their scope seems okay. I think it was the PX4i, but I've also heard a lot of issues with that scope breaking and getting it warranted. Their red dot also sucks. So yeah, I can't really think of any reason I would ever want to buy a Steiner product. They're also extremely, extremely prone to just making stuff for government bait. Hence why they're so high up the list. They don't really seem to care about civilians. The civilian market is an afterthought. So I think that's an appropriate place to put Steiner in my opinion. Next, we have Aimpoint, okay? Obviously, if you have money to spend, Aimpoint is the way to go as far as red dots. If you have a gun and you have decided, hey, I'm only ever gonna really need a red dot on this, they're the way to go. The only reason they're gonna be slightly off to the left here is because their magnifier sucks. But other than that, I mean, I have heard issues of the Comp M5 being a little dim, but I, you never know how true that is. So obviously, Aimpoint, they're gonna be right at the very edge here in terms of quality. Now, in terms of being sort of federal government, you know, contract simp bait, obviously Aimpoint made all of their money in the GWAT. However, they are a little, they're still plenty comfortable selling you a red dot sight. Um, even though they do have some goofy orange Aimpoint T2s for hunting shotguns or whatever, um, I, I'm glad that they're willing to sell to civilians. As far as European tactical equipment company goes, I mean, they're equipment company as far as they go um aim point is pretty good so i think yeah we'll put them we'll put them down there i feel plenty comfortable putting there they're not you know out there sending free aim points to every tactical woodsman you know minute man guy but i mean hey i think they've earned their spot right there all right so this is going to be a relatively unknown company for a few of you guys let me just blow up the logo so you can see it this is going to be munition works okay formerly known as militia works uh, basically, it's just a guy and his brother, I think. I think in Wisconsin or something. And he doesn't machine any new AR parts, as far as I know, except for maybe the lowers. But what he does do is he handpicks some of the best parts in the industry and assembles them basically perfectly. If you're looking to buy a brand new out of the box AR-15 from one to two grand, I would highly recommend checking him out. If I ever am in a position to do that, I'm absolutely gonna purchase one from him. Seems like a really cool guy. Every AR-15 from what I've heard ships with a free Bible with a testimony that he's written himself in it. So really, really cool. I am highly, highly recommend buying his stuff if you're in the market for a new high quality AR. Next is gonna be PSA. PSA of like five years ago in 2017 probably would have been like over here somewhere. Okay, maybe even as far as over here. PSA now, I'm going to put them right here. Okay, PSA is only getting better. Their rifles are only getting better. They are only improving as a company. They're diversifying what they're making, which is incredible. Palmetto State Armory is turning into a freaking empire. Okay, I don't know if you've noticed. They make some of the cheapest demo you can buy. They are almost done perfecting the American-made AK. I, I give it another three or four years, but they're getting there. Um, and they're making the SG44. They're buying up all these old companies so that they can make cool stuff. They basically make the only uh, fixed carry handle uppers you can buy right now. Um, they also make, obviously, some of the cheapest ARs you can buy. And honestly, in my personal experience, I have never seen an issue with a Palmetto State Army rifle, okay? They also have a really great web store. So, 
yeah, PSA goes right there. They're very, very, very pro-American citizen owning guns. That's their whole mission statement is to have an AR-15 in everyone's hands. Um, and they, I think, make a quality product, especially if you're just getting into this. I think they're a great place to start. Um, so yeah, PSA firmly earned their spot down there. Also, the 5.7 pistol that they make was on sale for $399 the other day. So um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what to say, man. I mean, <laughs> they make some cool stuff. So let's move on to the next one. Magpul. Okay, Magpul a few years ago, another GWAT staple. Obviously, there was a P Mag in the AR that has allegedly killed Osama bin Laden. Um, honestly, yes, I know. Obviously, they're the they're the magazine of NATO. So, you know, I, I feel like you could place them up here, but honestly, I'm gonna put them down here, and here's why. They clearly want to sell you. The, uh, drum magazines. <laughs> Magpul wants every single person in this country to have an AR-15 with their furniture and a Magpul D60 in it. And they're not afraid to tell you that. Um, recently, I think it was one or two shot shows ago, they released or announced that they were developing a mount for an LPVO. And in the mount, like there is going to be a projected screen with how many rounds are left in your gun and a range finder, I believe. And they specifically mentioned in the ad that they wanted civilians to have this stuff so magpul i mean they are not afraid to say what they what they believe they're not afraid to promote gun ownership in this country uh, they're not going to give in to you know the the people in the government that buy their stuff they're more than happy to sell you whatever you want so yeah magpul's great also sorry hills have goons they make the best magazine on the market i hate to say it um, anyway, let's go go to Surefire, another GWAT staple. Surefire's made all sorts of weird stuff throughout the years. They made, obviously, some of the best flashlights you can buy for the money. Um, if you're looking to upgrade from Streamlight, that's where you go, straight into Surefire. They also make suppressors, which seems relatively unrelated to making flashlights. They also make the worst 60-round AR-15 magazine ever made, which also seems unrelated to the other two. Um kind of weird. I don't know why they have such a wide variety of things they make, but there you go. Um, their suppressors, I've heard nothing but good things about. Um, obviously, their flashlights are good as well. Um, I'm going to put them... Um, they're really close to EOTech. They're not afraid to sell to civilians, but part of that is that they just don't make anything that, other than suppressors, I guess, that really, I don't know, is threatening to the government. So, I don't know. I think, I think they're going to go... I wouldn't say they're better quality than EOTech. I think they kind of share a spot. So we're going to put them right there. All right, next uh, is going to be Glock. <laughs> this is a tough one. I've been trying to think of where to go. Because on one hand, 80% of the world's militaries and police use Glock handguns. On the other hand, there's probably a Glock in literally every evidence locker in this country. So they're happy to sell it to, to civilians. They're happy to market to civilians. Um, they've never done anything sort of Fed posty where they promote like civilians, you know, civilians uh, doing Fed post stuff. Um, tell you what, I think I think they're right here. The reason why they're so far over is because you know they're perfect, Glock perfection, right? So we're gonna go ahead and put them there. They're even just a little bit out. I think they're just that good. So we'll go ahead and put them there. Next, CMMG. Okay, CMMG is hilarious. So. Let's talk about what they do. On one hand, they make a bunch of products I don't really care about. Um, for example, they make a whole line of custom parts for your AR. I'm not interested in any of that at all. They also make the best 9mm PCC, but making the best 9mm PCC is kind of like being the fastest guy in the nursing home. It's not that impressive, okay? <laughs> On the other hand, though, they make the CMMG Descent. And if you watch the ad for the CMMG Descent, it, it is it is it is so close to just being a manifesto. Like what they're implying in that ad is really like kind of sketch. I wonder if anyone got in trouble for making that ad over at CMMG. So we're gonna put um. I think that's a comfortable spot. I would love to own a Descent one day. I think they're really cool. I think CMMG makes a great product. I I think I. Uh, I'm probably going to get a lower parts kit from them soon here. So good stuff. I think they make some cool guns, uh, but they are obviously very pro uh, civilian gun ownership. So they're going to go right down there. All right. 
HK. This is gonna make some people mad. They are like, they're like beyond. They're like, they're off the grid. They're off the grid, okay? Let me explain the placement of HK here because this is gonna make some people mad. One, I'm not that impressed with roller delayed guns. If having a gun with a roller delay is such a massive leap forward in development, then we would see every other gun company in the industry trying to replicate that, right? We don't see that. All we've really had is Angst at Arms, I think, makes an M makes an AR that's roller delayed. Who cares? No one cares. Okay, who cares? No, I don't care. I don't really care because roller delay seems to really benefit pistol caliber carbines, but I'm like the number one hater of pistol caliber carbines on the planet. So not I don't really care about that at all. I also don't think their guns are that great. Okay, I've shot an MP5 before. It wasn't that impressive. It feels out of date. It's cool. Don't get me wrong. It looks good. And it's got a vibe, right? It's got soul, I guess. Um, I'm not that impressed with the G3 platform. It feels pretty out of date. Um, there's nothing HK's ever made that's that interesting. I, I guess I like the Wick stick. I think that's cool. But there's literally no reason to own that when the Glock 34 exists or when you can just get a Glock 17 with a Radian Raptor. Right, there's literally no reason to get it. So there's not a single gun HK's ever made that's in, that's interesting to me. They're also, they're really two-faced, okay? And let me tell you what I mean. 1911 Syndicate interviewed a, a, a rep from HK. And they were basically asking him, like, okay, why don't you import guns into the country? And 1911 Syndicate, they're massive HK sims, which is fine. They have a right to their opinion. Again, this isn't too serious. But the guy was like, oh, you know, we only have so many employees. We're kind of a, you would think we're a big company, but we're actually kind of small, yada, yada, yada. He gave some like weird answer. And at the same time, HK makes the HK416, which is used by like a million different government agencies all over the world. Uh, Ian McCollum once said on a podcast with Q, he said the HK416 is the right is the new right arm of the free world. That's how prolific it is. And I completely agree. So you either A, make the standard assault rifle for the EU and the Marine Corps, by the way, or B, you're a small little niche gun company. You, you can't have both. That's ridiculous. So they don't really have any love for the civilian market at all. And they purely exist to supply EU with uh, with 416s. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm no, I don't know. I think they burn that spot solidly. There's not a single gun they make that that that's interesting to me. Maybe a 416, but honestly, just get an AR. You know, you know, whatever. Let's move on to Sig. I think Sig. Sig is weird. Sig's hard to place. Now keep in mind, I have a. I, I don't like Sig either. I'm not a big fan of Sig. I own three Sig products. Two of them I have pretty big issues with. Um, we're gonna put Sig. Ah, uh, here. Okay. Let me explain that placement because I don't think they're as anti-civilian. They're obviously trying to make the best concealed carry handguns possible. The P365 series of handguns is incredible. I, I really think it's, it's technologically very impressive. I really like the P365 series. I love my P365. That's the one SIG prom product I own that doesn't have issues, which by the way, their new rifle is not anything that I would ever expect. I think if warfare has taught us anything in the last 60 years, it's that quantity of firepower is better than quality of firepower. And clearly this new rifle is about quality of firepower and it's about penetrating level four plates that probably don't exist. So it's a weird move. Here's what I bet. I bet they get a few thousand of the new SIG rifles. They realize they suck because you can't carry nearly as much ammo as their old M4s. They're a lot heavier than their old M4s. They realize they suck, and what happens is they get relegated to being really good DMRs. That's what I think is going to happen to the new SIG rifle. We'll see if time, what time will tell. But SIG is starting to win a whole bunch of government contracts. Uh, now, granted, they did, um, they did make the SIG brace, and they did release the next generation service weapon to civilians. So, you know what? I think I'm going to put them right in the middle. I think that's a that's a good spot. I think that's that's where SIG lives. Is right on that line. So, we'll go ahead and put them there. All right, next Radian. Oh, what I wouldn't give to own a Radian. Okay, so they're going to go firmly right there. They probably make the best AR15 you can buy and it costs 3 grand. 
Now, do I think it's a thousand dollars better than a munition works AR? No, I don't. So I'm probably, if I ever have that kind of money, I'm probably just going to buy a munition works and then put a thousand dollar optic setup on top. But Radian is a really cool company. I love what they do. There is not a single Radian product that I do not want. Everything they make is incredible. Magpul, I love almost everything they make, but then they made the bad lever. Radian, everything they make is like, mwah. it's like, it's like, it's like a, it's like a love letter to the AR or Glock platform. I love Radian to death. Um, they're also very pro, very pro gun for the civilian market. They've organized rallies in Oregon and maybe even outside of Oregon. Uh, they've done a lot to that. I think they're great. Radian, very good. Let's move on. Daniel Defense. <laughs> Daniel Defense a few years ago probably would have been like up here. In my opinion, they've slid way down this way, okay? Um, and the reason why I think that is that obviously Daniel Defense, I mean, their whole, they, they made their name selling Mark 18 uppers to the government. I'm sure a bunch of other complete rifles as well, I'm sure. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of these um, MK Ultra victims, let's say, end up showing up with Daniel Defense rifles. So <laughs> that's part of why they're so high up here. It's another reason why they're so high up on the list. Another reason why they're so high up on the list is because there was some controversy a few years ago where some of the executives at Daniel Defense were donating money to the Democratic Party. And, you know, this is not a politics channel, but come on. I mean, if you're a gun company, what are you doing? Uh, <laughs> donating money to the party that wants you out of business. Unless you knew your company were to survive because all of your money's from military contracts, right? So yeah, Daniel Defense firmly earns a spot up there. The reason why I'm moving him further down the quality thing, quality uh, access, is because Lucas Botkin, who it might be the most prolific gun media influencer of all time. He's right up there with Grantham and like Brandon Herrera, right? He's in like the top three. Um, he reviewed a DDM 4v7, and the handguard wasn't timed. Daniel Defense has two big things going for the ARs. One is their barrel, and two is their handguard. So half of what makes a Daniel Defense a Daniel Defense was really screwy when he got it. Keep in mind, the DDM4 V7 is $1,700, okay? No excuse. I'm sorry, especially if you're sending your gun to a gun media influencer. There is absolutely no excuse that immediately put me off from ever buying a Daniel Defense. Because what are the odds I'm going to get a rifle that was assembled, you know, on 430 on a Friday and it never got QC'd, right? Sounds like it's a lot higher than I thought, than I would think. So yeah, Daniel Defense has earned that spot. Okay, next, Caltech. Caltech lives, breathes, and rules over the bottom left corner of this graph, Okay. Caltech's very interesting. Obviously, I think his name's George Kelgren, um, the guy who runs Caltech. He is one of the best firearms designers of our era. I think in World War, like if he was around in World War One or World War II times, he would have been the John Browning. Like him and John Browning would have been best friends. And they would have competed to make some of the most hilarious and crazy firearms of all time. Now, Caltech's biggest problem is that they can have the coolest, most innovative design in the world. But the problem is, is that they get their raw materials from the same place Hasbro's Nerf gets their raw materials, <laughs> okay? This is an infamous thing. All kel guns feel like an approximation of a gun. They feel like an airsoft gun or a BB gun, right? They have that feel. It's the, And it's not even that they're using plastic. They're using a very specific kind of plastic, <laughs> okay? Now, it doesn't mean the guns are bad, but they're definitely not anything you would want to be using long term, okay? Um, as someone who was a, uh, I was a repair guy for my buddy sub two K for like a year. I was always fixing his gun. Okay. They're not the most reliable. They're, they're not the most durable by any means, but they're very affordable and they're extremely fun because they're so unique and different. Um, recently Smith and Wesson, um, they tried to kind of refine two of Caltech's design. They made basically a sub two K clone that folded to the side instead of, you know, um, I guess folding in on itself. And they made a KSG clone. Now, a lot of people gave them 
flack for that. I actually really like that. I think people should take Keltex designs and refine them, make them duty grade, make them made out of better materials, right? I, I actually really like that trend. I just wish Keltec could see some money from that. Um, I would love to see a company like Radiant or something make um, the RDB survival a little bit more um, a little bit more durable, a little bit more pragmatic of a tool. I think that'd be really cool. So yeah, Caltech's obvious, and obviously they're happy to sell guns to any American civilian who has uh, 250 bucks. So yeah, Caltech, they make cheap, innovative guns. They go right there. So, all right, second to last here, we got B and T. B and T, they're interesting. Okay, so they're not, they're they're not they're agnostic when it comes to civilian or government. They don't really seem to care. All they care is that you are legally able to own their weapons, whether you're a US citizen, a Swiss citizen, a police department, or a government agency, whatever, they don't really seem to care, okay? They're not, they don't seem biased. You just have to have a ton of money, okay? And um, so that's why they're gonna ride the line on that axis there. And obviously their quality's stellar, okay? There are, there are incredible, incredible weapons made over there at BNT. What makes them so weird, what makes BNT so weird is that they make everything in batches of like one to 300. And then they make them once for one random contract in Europe and then never make them again. And so there's a lot of incredible unicorn guns out there made by BNT. I'd recommend going to their website and just looking at some of the really cool guns. I had never heard of most of these. Uh, because they're made for like one specific government agency for one specific mission. They get made once and then never made again. Um, so yeah, B and T, I mean, they make some really cool stuff. I love them to death. Um, I'd love to own one of their products one day. That probably won't happen. They're too expensive, <laughs> but very, very cool stuff. So yeah, if you're lucky enough to own B and T, uh, good for you, man. I, in my mind, they're like what I think what people think HK does, B and T actually does. If that makes sense, I think people think of HK as this European, uh, you know, uh, high-end, you know, snobby uh, pistols. HK they have all the snob, but they're they're not that functional. B and T weapons are cutting edge. Um, so yeah, B and T they've earned their spot right there. Okay, last but not least, Trigicon. Trigicon. They have Bible verses on literally all of their optics. That immediately moves you down the ladder in terms of being a fed way closer to Uncle Ted's cabin. Okay. Really cool. They're also happy to sell to civilians. Very cool as well. Um, they're not that innovative. Their red dot sucks and their LPVOs have problems. So we're going to put them right there. I think that's a, I think that's a good placement. Listen, here's the deal. I'm a prism guy, right? I love prism optics. Trigicon basically perfected the prism optic like 40 years ago, okay? And uh, yeah, I mean, if you bought a Trigicon ACOG back then and put it on your AR and you had like, I don't know, some Surefire weapon light and a hose clamp on your AR, you've had basically no reason to change your gun's layout for 40 years, <laughs> okay? You've had no reason to upgrade. Um and part of that is that prism optics, you know, just by their nature, they're very simple, right? So it's pretty easy to do one really well when compared to, say, like an LPVO. Um, and so, yeah, they continue to make the best prisms on the market. I will definitely own either the battery-powered 4X ACOG or just the old TA31. I'll definitely own one of those one day just because they're incredibly durable. They're not as light as my Vortex Spitfire, but they have a lot more features. And, and frankly, they just have a way better reputation and they have a way... They have a storied history of being indestructible. So, yeah, man, I mean, avoid their red dots. Their scopes might be okay, but, I mean, if you're looking for a prism optic and you have money, there's really no reason to get anything other than a Trigicon. All right, guys, I know there's way more companies I need to cover. I'd love to cover 511, you know, some of the boomer gun companies. I'd love to cover them at some point. But for now, uh, these are all the companies that are relevant in my daily thoughts about this stuff. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of fights in the comments. Please argue with me. Call me dumb. Call me stupid. Uh, tell me why I'm wrong. I'd love to hear it. Anyway, guys, you guys rock. If you want to support the channel, hit up Civilian Expedition Outfitters. Um, it's going to be in the description below. Pick up a sticker. It's going to cost less than like five bucks. You're supporting me and you get something really cool to stick on your analogy. So take it easy, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day.